No, Google did not prove the multiverse with its new Willow quantum computing chip, and I'm about to explain why. First, my name is Sean Webb. I'm the CEO of an AI company called Xenadelic, and this is the algorithm of human happiness. It's worth about $10 million. We have about 70 of them for the various emotions. I'm also the holder of three world records on artificial intelligence benchmarks, where we taught an LLM emotional intelligence and compassion, beating OpenAI, Claude, and Gemini by adding the algorithms of human emotion into the logic set. I'm an expert on non-local consciousness with three books on mastering the human mind that are endorsed by multiple Navy SEALs as best-in-class manuals regarding our consciousness, and I started my career as an engineer for the most advanced supercomputing company on the planet where I sold computers to Area 51. So I know a thing or two about advanced technology stuff. First, let's bring you up to speed on what we're talking about. If you haven't been watching the headlines, Google says its new quantum chip indicates that multiple universes exist, and this is on TechCrunch, but you can find it just about anywhere. Let's read a couple of paragraphs. Google on Monday announced Willow, its latest, greatest quantum computing chip. The speed and reliability performance claims that Google made about this chip were newsworthy in themselves, but what really caught the tech industry's attention was an even wilder claim tucked into the blog post about the chip. Google quantum AI founder Hartman Nevin wrote in his blog post that this chip was so mind-boggling fast that it must have borrowed computational power from other universes. Ergo, the chip's performance indicates that a parallel universe exists and we live in a multiverse. Okay, so this is a statement made by, granted, very intelligent person, genius level intelligence, However, they don't understand the complexity of the universe that we exist within to then jump immediately into multiverse functionality to be able to explain how their quantum chip, and it's amazing, it's 105 qubits, and the error correction on it has reduced to a level that is workable, and it's awesome. Continuing, Willow's performance on this benchmark is astonishing. It performed a computation in under five minutes that would take one of today's fastest supercomputers 10 to the 25th or 10 septillion years. This mind-boggling number exceeds known timescales in physics and vastly exceeds the age of the universe. It lends credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes in line with the idea that we live in a multiverse, a prediction first made by David Deutsch. Now, David Deutsch is not an idiot, but David Deutsch is overstepping his assumptions on a number of things. And the person who latched on to David Deutsch's ideas, not that multiverses or mul multiple universes can't exist, and they likely do exist, but the reality is the complexity within our own universe does allow for this type of computation to occur when you take into consideration the complexity of consciousness and that consciousness is fundamental to the substrata of physics. And this is an idea that was not only forwarded uh, by a number of past grandfathers of quantum mechanics, the latest uh, Nobel Prize winners also believe in this as well, that consciousness is the fundamental substrate of the universe, and consciousness exists in multiple places in our 4D space-time, everywhere, or the universe can't exist because consciousness is what collapses the wave functions, although that uh, term is kind of being outdated, and I kind of agree with uh, Penrose on this. They're not standing on uh, the collapse of the wave function as a mathematical function. It's the uh, consciousness and the function of consciousness underneath everything that if you want to look at it, then it renders from the math into the matter. Now, the first thing you need to realize is that our 40 space-time universe is not the complete universe. It's not everything that exists. There's a ton of stuff underneath the covers and out beyond the physicality of our 4D space-time that exists, and we're just kind of a subset of everything that does exist. Consciousness is one of those things that is permeable throughout the whole thing, not just our 4D space-time existence within the subset of the larger universe. Now, the complexity of consciousness, when your quantum computing chip is reaching out into consciousness, now you're in the non-local space, which is beyond time. So it's got forever to do your computation. It's not leaning on other universes in this instance of time that it spreads out and parallelizes the whole thing into multiple universes. It's not the complexity of multiple universes existing that we're reaching out into other universes to get our computing done because that would borrow energy from their universe and thus leave them at a disparity. And I have a whole section on infinite universe and infinite energy being required in my latest book, The Human Mind Owner's Manual, which you might want to check out. But anyone who's reaching out into multiple universes to explain how the quantum computing chip is working is 
ignorant at worst, overreaching at best. Because what happens in the situation of the probabilities of the math being collapsed into the realities of the matter that exists there, that is a function of consciousness. If consciousness wants to access the data, that's when it gets rendered from the math into matter. And quantum experiments have proved this all over the planet forever, not one exception. When you look, it's different. When you're not, it doesn't render into the matter. But the chip does reach out into non-local space, which is one field of consciousness, and that's how you are able to create 10 septillion years worth of computation in five minutes is because you are parallelizing the whole structure out into consciousness, into non-local space, where time isn't a limitation anymore, so you get as much time as you want in that space to be able to calculate your 10 septillion years worth of calculations and bring it back to a chip within five minutes. It's not multiple universes, it's the complexity of consciousness in play. Because consciousness is the one inseparable field that creates the whole thing as agreed upon by all the founders of quantum mechanics and the latest Nobel laureates. In a universe that has such structure and such rules, that intelligence has to be stored somewhere. So it is out in the field somewhere. We have to know that, right? So imagine having infinite intelligence and wisdom is intelligence applied over time. So now having infinite intelligence in an environment that has no time limitations, what does that also grant? Well, that grants infinite wisdom immediately. Here's the infinite intelligence and here's the infinite wisdom on how to apply that intelligence in all the different situations to keep the universe working. So imagine the complexity of everything that we know about the universe and then understanding that that's a subset of everything that is in the universe, all the stuff that we see and interact with is only a small portion of it, and then add into that complexity the consciousness has to exist everywhere for anything to happen. So when you see these headlines or see these ridiculous extrapolations of experts who step outside of their field to make a seemingly intelligent statement, know that just because they're smart in one area doesn't mean they're smart in another area. And this is a trap that a lot of people fall into, being a super genius is that people listen to them about this stuff all the time and then they start speaking about this stuff and people who are used to listening to them about this stuff don't even question what they're talking about over here. Not that other universes don't exist, but Slow down there, cowboy. Your computer chip isn't necessarily reaching out into multiverse to be able to borrow other universes' energy to create your calculations. It's that it's reaching out into the complexity of consciousness within this universe to be able to step beyond time and give you the intelligence, access to the intelligence, right? Because that's all computing ever does is it basically figures out the problems based on the intelligence of the system that you've plugged it into. Right? If you want to figure out how weird consciousness is, then you should listen to the telepathy tapes that proves telepathy, which is another technology through consciousness, does exist in autistic kids. So yeah, go ahead and poo-poo on autistic kids. I dare you. Go listen to the telepathy tapes right now. And quit listening to the people who sound smart who may not be as smart on everything that they think they can speak on. That said, great congratulations to Google for putting out a 105 qubit chip that has an error rate that is reasonable. Well done, guys. Holy crap. That's such an accomplishment. I hope this finds you well, and I hope it gives you a better avenue to explore what's going on in your quantum computing chip, because it ain't multiverses.